as I'm sure many people will know, it's the 25th anniversary of BBC Two today, and uh, that's certainly a day worth celebrating for the game of snooker, because uh, one program that was uh, created to celebrate and take advantage of the switch to colour television on BBC Two in 1969 really had a profound effect uh, and took uh, the game of snooker to a much wider public. Now, it was, of course, hot black and for those of us who were involved in the program here's the uh, familiar countdown to those famous opening titles 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 <laughs> Alan Weeks, the presenter for uh, most of the run of Pop Black from uh, 1969 to uh, what just uh, three years or so ago now, and uh, I was fortunate enough to present the uh, the last two of the Pop Black series. Now, Pop Black came to an end really when the expansion of other television snooker tournaments effectively squeezed it off the schedules. But snooker has a lot to be grateful for, and I'm sure it is very grateful for the contribution that Pop Black made to um, uh, the game of snooker. Now, the matches were over one frame. The final, though, was over the best of three. And our little contribution now to BBC Two's 25th anniversary. The final, John Spencer, very youthful John Spencer against Graham Miles. Graham's won the first frame, and Ted Lowe commentates on the second. Spencer here started life as a turf accountant. Today, rated number two, that is world's second best player at snooker. One. Eight. And it looks to me as though Spencer has now got himself into position. Seven reds there. Nine. <coughs> Sixteen. Grand Miles. Anxiously watching Spencer in this break. How badly he needs this second frame and the pop black title. But Spencer has something to say about that. Steadily. 23. Down to five reds now. <coughs> oh dear. Well, that's a turn up for the book. I thought Spencer was well set there. And he's taken the lead now, 39 11. 11, 39. still have the five reds, a possible 67 points on the table, a black with each of the five reds and all the colors. And Graham Miles has gone, I think, I'm not sure whether he's gone just slightly too far. From where I'm sitting, I can't quite see. No, obviously he can get through to that black. Eight. Could be that that last shot by Spencer was terribly expensive. Nine! You'll 
a nasty angle on the pink hair. He's played it steadily. Will it drop? Yes. Fifteen. <laughs> and he's a little unlucky there for the black. 16. But he still has the pink. Creeping back here. Only six points in it now. <coughs> and he's played that very fine as a safety stroke, and it's a good one indeed. Very nice comeback there by Graham Miles. And the cue ball very nearly into the middle, but not quite. Our packed house here electrified with the situation as we stand, just six points in it. Spencer 39, Miles 33. Miles, of course, having won the first frame last week. And a great shot again for Miles. Wow. A terrific performance by this Birmingham player. Screws right up the table for the last red and snookers himself. Five. Only one point in it. 39, 38. As Miles scratches the side of his head, thinking, oh dear, oh dear. I'm down to the last red and I snooker myself. The pink in front, the red near the cush. What he must not do is to leave this red on. And he's missed it entirely. Well, that's an extraordinary shot I'll because he's given a free ball. I'm a free ball. <coughs> 43, 38. Spencer playing the green, which of course counts as a red. One point there, he's now onto the blue and then up for the last red. in line for the top pocket. Let's see if he can get round far enough to get on the black. Well, he endeavoured to get on that black by screwing back onto the cushion and he's in fact missed the red but come out of it reasonably well. 11 points in it now, with one red, the last red on the table. behind the yellow.
Well, John Spencer's missed that, and this looks dangerous to me. It's coming up over the centre pocket. Oh, dear, oh, dear. A catastrophe for John Spencer. Obviously, wow. nerves creeping in at this vital stage of our three-frame final. 39, With Graham Niles having won the first match. And there, biting her fingernails, is the wife of Graham Niles, Heather, Hi. who's been following her husband right the way through this series. There you see the biting of the nails by Heather Miles as she's willing the balls down for her husband, these last few colours. Ten. <coughs> Just one point in it now. Miles one point behind. He goes to the lead. Perfect position. Has a look at the scoreboard. 52-49. 57-49. Tried so hard to split those two colours and put the pink over the top pocket. Now he has to pull one right out of the bag. And it's in, and my word, the final of the 1974 Hot Black Series goes to a young man, 34-year-old Graham Marshall Bernie. What about that as a finish? A fantastic climax to the Hot Black 1974 with the Birmingham player, unknown 12 months ago, coming in for the first time and going out with a two-frame victory over former world champion John Spencer and former pop back champion John Spencer. The 1974 champion, Graham Mark. And with me now, the impresario of all time of snooker, Mr. Joe Davis, who is going to present the pop black trophy to Graham Miles. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. Wonderful performance. Magnificent. Thank you. Magnificent. Thank you. Magnificent. Thank you. Very much pleasure. Great, Joe Davis there, giving the trophy to Graham Miles. Graham's still a professional on the circuit, actually played in the qualifying rounds of this championship. And, of course, John Spencer, very much still a professional, the three times world champion. And although he lost uh, that final there, he did win Pop Black on three occasions this afternoon. Of course, he's uh, a member of our commentary team as always and alongside him in the commentary box alongside me now is ted lowe who ted evolved in pop black right from the start uh, give us a, a quick idea of how it all came about well very quickly david um, i'd been on at the bbc for some 20 years for continuity in snooker on the box and uh, phil lewis who was then a producer in birmingham bbc telephoned me one day incidentally he retired not so long ago as an executive of BBC, but it was Phil who rang me and asked me if I'd put a program together, which I couldn't believe after all these years, it was going to happen. And uh, the funny thing is, he said, uh, what I want you to do is to get the program together for uh, seven or eight programs, uh, and I can give you the title, it's Pop Black. I said, well, that's no good, you could have the word snooper in it. But he insisted Pop Black, and I wasn't in a frame of mind to argue, I just wanted to see snooper on the box. Going back just a little while from there, what was snooker like before Pop Black? In well, terms of, you know, public attention? Very little of it. Um, we had Leicester Square Hall up until 1955. Uh, Leicester Square Hall held, uh, had 210 seats. And that was the Mecca, the Wimbledon, the Lords of the game throughout the world. We played all the championships there for uh, nine, ten years whilst I was there as general manager. We opened in 46-7. So what was the difference then that this program Pop Black made uh, in terms of the snooker's um, 
value in, in the wider public. In the, in oh, the well, it's quite extraordinary what it did. Uh, you see, in, in the old days, uh, billiards uh, was the origination. Billiards and snooker were played either in gentry's homes when after the uh, dinner party and the glass of port. You'd, You'd know all about that, Ted, wouldn't you? Yes, I know. Yes, I had one or two occasions. <laughs> <laughs> Or, of course, it was the dens of iniquity, the billiard hall and the spibs place, etc., as known in those days. What Pop Black did was to bring the game of snooker, which I love so much, into the homes of millions of people in between those two classes. Mm. And you remember, was it um, Ray Reardon won the first one in 69? Yes, he did. What do you remember about that, that first one, the first series? Did you think then it was going to run for so long? No, I had no idea. I mean, it was quite extraordinary. I had a... a quite a, a problem in getting eight players to start with. Really? Um, I got to, in those days, of course, Ray Redden and John Spencer were the two leading lights. Fred Davis, who'd been a uh, world champion for uh, eight years, was still around. So uh, Fred came along and so did Rex Williams, who'd uh, been prominent. John uh, Pullman was prominent. And then one had a problem. And I, I uh, got hold of Jackie Ray, who at that time was Irish champion. There was Kingsley Kenley, who was better known as a billiards player from the Midlands. And Gary Owen, who was a, a Birmingham farmer and had just turned professional. And those were our eight players. By the time it ended in 86, uh, snooker was transformed. And of course, the winner in 86, because I was very um, privileged to do the last two pop blacks, was Jimmy White, of course. That's right, yes. You must have been very sad to see it go. Oh, very sad indeed. What we tried to do over the years was to introduce a new name each year. And you've just seen the 1974 final, which is quite extraordinary in its way, uh, because Fred Davis had fallen ill just prior to our going on the air to make the series. And uh, I'd heard of Graham Miles, but, uh, you know, he wasn't really prominent in those days. And I asked Graham if he'd come in, he jumped at it, of course. Uh, he won that tournament. Not only did he win it then, but the following year he won it again, which was quite extraordinary, and uh, Graham has been... Uh, a great name ever since. And just finally, I mean, I was saying earlier, Snooker will always be grateful, I'm sure, to what Pop Black did. I think it will. It started the, uh, the boom that we see today, and I, I like to think that Pop Black takes a lot of credit for the smartness of the players, their evening dress, uh, their courtesies, and really the pleasant side of the game which is presented throughout the world. Ted, thanks very much indeed. Thank you, David. And uh, thanks very much to Pop Black for all it did for snooker uh, over those years. OK, we were looking at Pop Black, by the way. It's the 25th anniversary of BBC Two, if you just uh, joined us. That's what we're talking about, Pop.